You may be considering purchasing the Canon EOS 7D Mark II or the Canon EOS 600D, also known as the EOS Rebel T3i, but you're trying to figure out if they're still a good idea to buy in 2023. In this review, we'll discuss their strengths and weaknesses so you can figure out which one you want to buy. First, you'll want to know which lenses these cameras work with. Both Canon EF and EFS lenses are compatible with both of these cameras. The compatible lenses include the Canon EF 50mm f1.8, the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens, and many more. When third-party lenses are added, like the Yongnu or EF 50mm f1.8, the available choices become nearly limitless. Next up, what about storage? Can they use two SD cards? The 7D Mark II does, yes, but the 600D does not. This type of function is usually only available on higher-end cameras and is not present on mid- and entry-level models. As a quick side note, it's important to point out that the 7D Mark II doesn't take two SD cards, but rather an SD card and a CF card. This function is helpful because it lets you save backups of your photos in real time since they are kept on both cards simultaneously. The purpose is to provide you with a backup in case a second card fails, which is very helpful, especially if you are doing professional work. However, SD card failures are uncommon and having several SD cards on rotation makes them less likely to happen. Furthermore, you have the option not to use the backup feature and instead utilize both cards individually, which will result in doubling your storage capacity. On a different note, do they have connectivity features? Unfortunately, neither camera has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or NFC connectivity, no. Cool, so what about weight? Will carrying these cameras break your back? The 7D Mark II measures 148.6 by 112.4 by 78.2 mm or 5.85 by 4.43 by 3.08 inches and weighs around 820 grams or 28.92 ounces, while the 600D measures 133.1 by 99.5 by 79.7 millimeters or 5.24 by 3.92 by 3.14 inches and weighs about 560 grams or 19.75 ounces. It's worth noting that both cameras are similar in terms of physical dimensions, making them compact and discreet. Clearly, the 7D Mark II is the beefier out of the two. If you're interested, I've reviewed quite a few cameras and lenses on my channel. You can find links below or click the card in the top right corner. In terms of build, the 7D Mark II is constructed with a higher quality magnesium alloy. Meanwhile, the 600D is comprised of stainless steel and polycarbonate resin with conductive fiber. The 7D Mark II has a much better build quality, but we'll discuss that more in depth later in the review. Stick around to find out what makes it better. Expanding on that, what should you expect from their displays? Both cameras come with screens that are of decent quality. These screens are good enough for navigating menus or reviewing photos. The 600D has an articulated screen, making it perfect for vlogging and protecting its surface from scratches when carried in a bag. Unlike the 600D, the 7D Mark II screen doesn't move or rotate as it is fixed in place. However, the 7D Mark II features an extra LCD, providing a stylish touch and allowing you to check your settings rapidly and conveniently. Although some individuals may not appreciate the LCD's appearance, I love it. Okay, so these two devices are rather versatile. How long do they work before they run out of battery? The LPE6N battery of the 7D Mark II can take about 650 shots, while the LPE8 battery of the 600D can give you around 450 photos. However, the battery life may vary due to screen usage, battery age, and even air temperature. It's recommended to have a few extra batteries with you, especially when working with others in case the battery runs out. By the way, if you find this video informative, don't forget to leave a like. Also, if you'd like to buy any of the items mentioned in this review, I have affiliate links down below for your convenience. Right, so how good are these cameras when it comes to actually taking photos? The photos you capture can be significantly impacted by the type of lens you use. 
However, let's focus on the camera's contribution since I don't actually know which lens you plan to use. First, let's discuss the sensors. The 7D Mark II has a 20.2 megapixel 22.4 by 15 mm APS-C sensor. On the other hand, the 600D has an 18 megapixel 22.3 by 14.9 mm APS-C sensor. Secondly, we can consider the processor. The Digic 6 is used in the 7D Mark II, while the 600D uses the Digic 4 processor. You might be wondering about what this means. Here are the enhancements that Canon cameras received from Digic 4 and 6 processors. The fourth Digic generation has faster image processing than earlier models. Additionally, there is an improvement in noise reduction for high ISO images and the capability to record H.264 1080p video. On the other hand, the Digic 6 brought more improvements, like better performance in low-light environments, decreased lag compared to past versions, and the ability to record 1080p video at 60 frames per second, along with a few other enhancements. Building on that idea, what is their maximum shutter speed? If you want to capture fast-moving subjects, can these cameras do that? So, the 7D Mark II has a top shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, while the 600D can do 1 4,000th. Right, but what if you want to do sports or wildlife photography, and thus you need to take loads of photos quickly? If that is the case, you're looking for continuous shooting mode. The 7D Mark II can do 10 FPS in this mode, while the 600D can do 3.7 FPS. In other words, within one second, the 7D Mark II captures 10 photos, while the 600D captures 3.7. This is incredibly useful if you are trying to capture very fast motion. Within that second, the more frames your camera can capture, the higher the odds you will get the specific moment you're after. Regarding ISO, the 7D Mark II ranges from 100 to 16,000, and can be expanded to 51,200, while the 600D has a range of ISO from 100 to 6400, which can be extended to 12,800. Generally, it's best to keep the ISO on the lower end if possible, to avoid unwanted noise appearing in your pictures. Now, are they equipped with dual pixel AF? So the 7D Mark II does have it, while the 600D does not. Dual pixel AF and a high number of autofocus points means increased autofocusing capability, which can be incredibly helpful. Regarding autofocus, the 7D Mark II can provide a maximum of 65 autofocus points, which is much more than the 9 autofocus points offered by the 600D. So, are they any good for video? The 7D Mark II has the ability to capture 1080p at a rate of 60fps, on the other hand, the 600D can shoot 1080p at 30fps, and it also allows you to record 720p at 60fps. In terms of dynamic range, these models do not provide the Canon Log feature that can be found in more expensive cameras. This feature enables obtaining more dynamic range from your camera, which is impossible with these models. Okay, so do either of these cameras have built-in optical image stabilization? Nope. Neither of these cameras has IBIS. Now, most cameras offer digital stabilization, but as a general rule, you should stay away from that. You have the option to experiment with the in-body digital IS if you want. However, the reality is that it is generally not very effective. Moreover, it is applied to the video and you do not have the option to get a backup of the video without it. Therefore, it is not worth using it. It is always better to capture shaky footage and stabilize it later in your preferred software. Stabilization technology is continually improving, and relying on in-body digital IS is unnecessary, making this a better option. In case you desire optical stabilization, you can opt for a lens such as the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens, but ensure that its name includes IS. This lens includes in-lens stabilization which is superior to in-camera digital stabilization. I just want to point out that I've reviewed a plethora of lenses on my channel. You can find relevant links down below, or you can click the card in the top right corner. So, can you use the 7D Mark II or the 600D for vlogging? At this point, pretty much any camera can be used for vlogging, but there are a few issues to bear in mind. 
First off, having a flip screen is ideal, so you can see what you're doing when the camera is turned around. Now, the 600D's flip screen makes vlogging easier while also protecting its glass surface when the camera is in your bag. On the other hand, the 7D Mark II does not have a flip screen. Secondly, both cameras have cropped APS-C sensors, which means they will produce a more zoomed-in image than full-frame sensors. Therefore, choosing lenses with shorter focal lengths is important because the camera's crop factor may make vlogging with some lenses difficult without using a tripod. You can utilize the aforementioned 18-55mm kit lens for handheld vlogging. Simply zoom it out completely to capture a larger area in the frame. If you purchase the version with IS, it will create smoother video in almost every situation. Another option is the Canon 24mm pancake lens, which is wide enough for vlogging. However, keep in mind that this lens does not feature IS, so the footage may appear shakier. The recommended lenses will differ if you plan to create content with a tripod. The 18-55mm and 24mm would not be the best choices. Instead, consider the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 or f1.8. These lenses have a wider aperture, allowing more light to enter and producing the desirable bokeh effect. However, they aren't ideal for handheld vlogging due to the fact that they are rather zoomed in and there is also the absence of IS. Equally important, how durable are these cameras? So the 7D Mark II has water and dust resistant sealing, while the 600D has no weather sealing. It is wise to handle your camera with caution and avoid excessive exposure to external elements. In terms of the maximum number of photos they can take, the 7D Mark II has a rating of 200,000 actuations, while the 600D can handle about 100,000. So, the cameras have a specific number of photos that they can shoot before the shutter wears out. Every time you press the camera button, it counts as an actuation. If we do some quick calculations, 200,000 photos can last for about 54 years, with 10 photos per day, and 100,000 photos can last for nearly 27 years at the same photo rate. Assuming you begin with no photos, other parts of the camera might stop working before you reach the shutter life expectancy. It's important to note that this calculation may need to be adjusted if you're purchasing a used camera. Therefore, verifying the number of photos the camera has taken is crucial before purchasing it. Be sure to carefully examine the listing to find this information. What are the intended uses for these cameras? Both of them are suitable for various types of photography such as portraits, street, product, landscape, wedding, events and documentary work. Remember that the lens you choose is more important than the camera when it comes to these types of photography. The process can be more complicated if you are interested in capturing sports and wildlife photos. Apart from the lens, there are other factors to consider. If you are aiming for sports and wildlife photography, you need a high number of frames per second in continuous mode and a fast shutter speed. As mentioned earlier, the 7D Mark II has a maximum continuous mode of 10 FPS, while the 600D only has 3.7 FPS. In addition, the 7D Mark II has a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, while the 600D only supports 1 4,000th. I hope this review has been helpful. If you're curious about the cost of these lenses in your area, there are affiliate links down below for your convenience. If you'd like to check out more reviews, you can either look down below for the relevant links or click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? Feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.